say the words Mitsubishi Lancer, and most people's imaginations will be fired up by images of the fire-breathing, rally-derived Evo 10. At the opposite end of the scale to that top-end model, though, are a host of more run-of-the-mill Lancers, with far more modest performance and price tags. Does run-of-the-mill mean mundane? There are just two engines to choose from, and both are petrol. The first is a 1.6-litre that's undemanding when you're pottering about, but it needs to be revved hard for overtaking or going up hills. The second is a 2-litre that's quieter when gaining speed. The controls are light and smooth, and the gearbox is sweet and precise, so it's easy to operate. The ride is reasonable on main routes too, though restless on badly surfaced roads. Sadly, there's no escaping the fact that it's dull to drive. You need big steering inputs to make it change direction, and the front tyres soon lose grip. Nor is it a particularly restful car to be in. Give the smaller engine any revs, and it roars unacceptably. The 2.0-litre is better, but only slightly. There's excessive wind noise at motorway speed, and rear passengers also have to put up with road noise that drowns out the conversation of people in the front. Most people will have no difficulty finding a reasonable driving position, although the seat is fiddly to raise or lower, and there's no reach adjustment for the steering column. With the exception of the tiny stereo buttons, the controls are easy to find and use. Visibility, though, is hampered by the addition of an unsightly and unnecessary spoiler on the boot that blocks your rear view. That said, this car is a decent enough four-seater, although headroom is a bit tight for tall adults. There's a reasonable boot, marred only by wheel arches that intrude at the sides. The Lancer is cheap to buy, but some running costs could be expensive. Insurance groups are quite high, servicing is needed every 9,000 miles, and fuel economy is nothing special, particularly with the automatic. At least Mitsubishi's hardly ever break down, and the trim all seems durable and well-assembled. The materials are unappealing, though, given the car a budget feel. Passive safety features include four airbags and Isofix child seat mounting points, but disappointingly, stability control isn't available. Sadly, very little of what makes the Evo 10 such a sporting icon transfers to the standard Lancer. It suffers from a dull drive, average ownership prospects at best, and from being merely an adequate place to sit. And these prices reflect those facts, starting from less than £10,000, which may tempt some people into buying one. <laughs>